Hey, Kaposi Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. Today, we're going to be talking about optimizing contact to work with FL Studio. So this is this is something that really just like changed my workflow because, it, for example, when I started, I had issues. I could only open like four instances of libraries, sample libraries, before it would crash. And what I found out was it's where contact thought the samples were, and it did this weird thing to find them, and it just it just was like crazy. So to fix that issue, if you're having that problem, Make sure, just go into, I believe it's an options still, options, database, and then you can you can tell it where to look for the samples properly. And then that issue should go away. Now, let's say that you're loading up instruments and they are loading with a crap ton of memory being used. It's like, okay, let me show you. So we have options, and so we'll go over here to memory, and we see here that we have this instrument preload buffer size. This setting has to do with how much of the sample it tries to load, it loads, this is how much of the sample it loads in your instrument, and then it will try and stream the rest of that sample. So let's say we're loading up, you know, our good old session strings library, and I want to, you know, load up section one, two, ensemble performance or whatever. It's loaded up this amount of sample, sampleage, sampling. And so this is really, this is a really important thing because if you try and load up, like if you have gigabytes here, that's not good. You do not want gigabytes there unless you have like some very specific reason for this. So how can you influence this number on the initial load up? Because it's the first load up that we care about. Now that loaded pretty quick. That's because I've loaded that one before. Um, but if we load like another one up, you see that it's loading up much slower. And so you want to be able to influence this because what happens is you can, it'll just bog down your system. So to influence this, we can go into options and change that. Now, I, I obviously have a very small setting. What's the difference between, you know, 60, which is the default in, currently, and the 18 that I have? Well, the difference is I will get more sample cutting out things depending on how fast my hardware is. So if my hardware is really fast, then it can provide, so it's going to load up those initial 18 kilobytes and then, or kilobits, however you say it, and then the rest of the samples, the sample is going to be streamed from my disk. It's called DFD uh, or direct from disk mode. Um, and what that does is, so if I play some notes and it hasn't streamed it fast enough, my note will just cut off. It'll just go, boop, gone, doesn't, don't work. Like if I had a note, it'll go, do, it'll just stop. And that's because I have my, my buffer size is too, it doesn't have enough of time to stream the rest of the samples. So I could fix that by increasing this. But increasing this will greatly slow down the initial load time and the amount of stuff it tries to load when I load it up. So for example, let's say I set this up. Now I'm going to be reasonable. If you put it at 240, uh, ooh, it's doing a thing. If you put it at 240, you could have some serious issues because it's going to load up like gigabytes of things some occasionally. Oh, ooh, see? Don't do that. This is not a good idea. Uh, oh, there you go. 0.74 gigabytes. So it changed it in real time. Wow. Okay. Anyways, you don't want this because of that. You're going to just use a lot more resources. It takes a lot longer to load. So we're going to move it back down to 18. It's going to change it. And you see that just, that just loads faster. Now, occasionally I'll get the choppy sample, but it will load up over time as I tell contact I want these samples. And then it won't be an issue. So I think it's worth it. CPU wise, you may keep it at the default 60. If you have a solid state drive, this should be like a non issue. You should set that sucker, you know, as low as you can go and you should be fine. Uh, I'm using a, an external drive that's 10,000 RPM. So it's a high performance external drive. That way I can load up. I don't have to have copies of this eating up drive space on my laptop and on my desktop. I can just have one like external drive copy. So once you, when you come in here, I went into the background here using this. This isn't always available, but you see the source module has been set to DFD. This is precisely that setting. You want this on DFD. If it's on sampler mode, I, th I think it's a compatibility issue thing, but sampler mode will load up the entire sample set, which is very uh, not effective. So you don't want things in sampler mode. You want them in DFD mode mo most of the time. Um... I've never used sampler mode, really. DFD mode should be fine. And then you can influence its loading operations here. So again, you saw that that changed into the gigabytes range. If I use like contact, uh, Spitfire, Spitfire's symphonic brass thing here, that, that would load up gigabytes. And so I definitely don't want that. I, my computer will crash. It almost did earlier. So 
Uh, yeah, just just so you know. So there's there's a thing. So that's one thing that you can do. Now there are a couple other things. When you load an instrument, so I have this external drive. Every time I take this external drive out and then put it back in and then tell it to load something, it's got to go and find the friggin' samples again. So it takes a while to load. But so let me show you. So I'm gonna load up this trumpet solo, and it's gonna take you know a fair chunk of time. So it's loading, and it's just taking its time because it's got to go find all those samples. This is a pretty intensive trumpet patch. So. It's looking them up. There's like all these different articulations that are included in this thing. And so now Spitfire also graciously provides economic patches. Well, I guess I paid for it. So I'm not sure how gracious it is, but they wisely provided economic patches that will, that are geared for CPU things. Now this, I usually don't give any heed. These are the patches I load because they're the ones right in front of me. Occasionally I will go back there. It just depends on the project. But I'm loading it, and it is loaded. Now, that, that was a pretty long wait time. Now, it's filling up my memory according to my setting there. And so, what I could do now, and one of the reasons why it takes so long is you have different microphone positions you can pick and all loads of other things. So, now, if I close it, though, and I want to, like, load it again, check it out. I load it. And there it goes, and it's loaded. So if you keep your drive specifically on your computer, you'll get additional boosts like that. And if you're working in a project, just that first load up takes a little while. So this, um, so anyways, that those are things that can improve your performance here and also save you on the memory because you'll have some serious issues if your memory starts filling up like that. Another thing is once you've written what you want, it's very wise to purge your samples. So you can hit purge and it's purge all samples. I have a video explaining this. And um, I have a video explaining this earlier in this series. And what it is basically is now as I play and you see you heard it cut right there. That's because it's the whole streaming sample trying to load the sample up faster than I'm playing. And it just can't keep up. So it basically purged everything out. And then I can play through my song and it will be told, hey, load up these samples. So I only have the samples that I'm using. That way, if I want to stay in MIDI, because it is a much more flexible medium than audio, then you can do that. But of course, if you're solid about the way it sounds and you have what you want, then bounce to audio, save the MIDI somewhere else. and It'll be way more CPU friendly towards you. So anyways, that's uh, the streaming thing. Now there's another thing about contact that you should know about. If we go in here, we have these two tabs up here. So I just opened up here. There's these cog menus up here. There's a settings tab and a processing tab. In the processing tab, there is a notify about rendering mode button. See, sometimes you get those clicks and pops Especially if you just open up a project and it hasn't, you haven't played through it yet. So contact hasn't been told, load up these samples yet. It's not received any MIDI messages to tell it which ones to load up. And so as a result, if you try and render it that without this thing on, it's going to load up chop samples, out of time samples, just all loads of issues. If you turn this on, contact is now being told, hey, we're rendering by FL Studio. I was like, hey, we're rendering a thing. And then contact's like, okay, I'll put on my rendering mode. And it puts it on and then it gets rid of all those issues. So this is like, when I found out about this button, I was tripping so hard. I was like, what the junk is this magic button here? Because yeah, that just changed everything, man. I, I was like, I, whew, I'm glad you know about it now. So anyways, those are some things that can help effectively run it. So there's, a, there's another thing that you should also know about. I'm gonna cover this um, in another video. Well, let's talk about one other thing first. So the other thing is how you have FL set up. If you have a very short buffer time, which uh, I could show you by coming in here to my audio settings and I can hit show ASIO panel. And this brings up my mix control for my USB audio interface, which is covered in recording basics if you want to know. But you see here I, under settings, I don't know why they don't enable it buffer size. Settings is such an ambiguous name. But there is an ASIO buffer size. That, it just opens up that menu. I think it's hilarious. And you see I have various options here. I have it set at four, which is great for tracking. So when I hit my key on my keyboard, it'll immediately start playing. But it's way more intensive CPU wise. So if I'm doing a mix down and I'm dealing with a lot of instances of contact and I'm just having clicks and pops from processing, I can go down to 20 milliseconds. This will create a, a larger buffer, similar to the amount that it loads up here. Uh, it'll create a buffer in that it, it eases on processing. So it'll create a buffer that will allow me to, there'll be a delay. Essentially, when I hit play, there'll be like a 20 millisecond delay, which doesn't matter when I'm just pressing play. But when I'm trying to track and play like some live stuff and record it live, that could be a huge issue. So I have it at four right now. But when I'm mixing down and I'm having, if I'm having problems, it'd be very wise to go down to 
20 milliseconds and it's a whole world of difference. I could process so much more like that. So that's another setting that you should be aware of. Now, there is uh, one other thing about working with contact. I'm going to cover this in a separate video, but it's a very bad idea to have loads of instances of contact. You see, I have three here. And you might be going, whoa, why do you have three? Well, this is a template. And this is the one, this is one of my favorite templates actually because it's very, very simple. It's got just a reverb, send, and delay. And I configure everything else as I go. And it's got these MIDI channels that are already zipped up. So I can, they're already connected to the contact instrument. Loads of other stuff. I'll be talking about my workflow videos. But this is about getting contact, you know, processing wise to work nicely. Well, one of the things that has to do with processing wise is if you load up like eight instruments of contact with eight like a separate contacts for every instrument. That's a terrible idea. I load up 16 generally. It depends on like my mindset and what I'm trying to accomplish. But what you could do is you can set it up to input to process and output the instruments in their own output. So right now it's coming out of output one, but I could put it out eight. And if I route this to one. So now when I play uh, the notes here, you see it's coming out insert eight and we're having some streaming things. But now you understand why we're having streaming problems. Uh, and you know that they'll go away as I play them more. Contact just needs a chance to load them. So eight, now you see the trumpets coming out. So this is, so I could load up, you know, like uh, 16 instruments in one instance. And this is way, way, way more effective. It's more effective for, it's just more effective. So you want to do this method. I used to do the other method and sometimes out of habit, I still grab it. And sometimes if I'm doing certain instruments, they're not friendly towards this. For example, I have shreddage one. And that one, if you load up the multi, you do not want to load up the multi in a, in a setting like this because of the way the multi works. So I will load up the multi in on in a separate instance sometimes. Um, it's usually not so big a deal. But then I have these other two. That way when I run out of 16 inputs here, I can do these other. And as long as they're empty, they're, they don't put too much of a load. So I, I'm totally fine with having the two here. And the reason is, is it's a workflow thing. I already have all the ports assigned, so I can just immediately start working and have separate channels for everything. It's really great. But processing-wise, very good idea to do it like this. Now, uh, I'll sh I'm going to have a separate video showing you how to set this up because it's a really simple deal. It just takes, uh, just takes a little bit of knowledge. And if you have any questions about this, let me know. If you, Hopefully, this will change the way you contact because it definitely did for me. Just some pointers. Uh, subscribe. Support me on Patreon and have a blessed day. And also the intuitiveness of a lot of this stuff. So first, we're going to start off with the most simple of simple. It is the sub bass. So if you don't know what a sub bass is, a sub bass is a low tone, a really low tone, meant to reinforce the bass of your track. So this is, this is used all the time. Sometimes it'll be called separate subs.